What's up, live? How's everybody doing? Check in, check in. Uh, once you check in, please comment where you're watching this from. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, put it in the live chat. If you're watching this video after the fact, that is no problem. Put it down in the comment section, and I'll try to get you an answer as soon as possible. Now, uh, for those of you who are not new to the channel, you already know about the independent courier industry uh, as it stands on YouTube currently. However, if you're somebody that's brand new to the industry, uh, this video will hopefully be a good starting point for you. And then you can go from here uh, down the rabbit hole, uh, for lack of a better word, what exactly you would like to do in the independent career industry. Appreciate all 11 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button when you come in. Uh, you guys let me know uh, if you can hear me okay or if you can see me okay. And what I quickly want to do in this video is just run down seven simple steps uh, for anybody that wants to start their own independent courier service. And I highly recommend that you do these steps in the order that I'm giving you uh, them to you rather uh, in this video. Because, uh, again, I have over 100 videos about the independent courier industry. It is by far my favorite business because it is the business that allowed me to leave uh, the corporate world or the nine to five world and become a full time entrepreneur. Not saying that it's the most lucrative business or it's the easiest business or anything like that. It's a good business. It is my favorite business and because it set me free, for lack of better words. Right. So if you're interested in it, uh, these are the seven simple steps uh, that you can do in order to start your own independent courier service. Don't worry about it. If you can't read my writing, uh, I'm going to read it all out to you anyway. First step. Watch the JT Hustles Courier playlist. Watch the JT Hustles Courier playlist. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but currently, as of this upload, I still have the most content related to the independent courier industry that's out today. It costs you nothing to watch a YouTube video. So before you go out and start buying vans and talking to other couriers and asking them who they work for and things like that, watch the videos. It's free. And it goes towards educating yourself. That is the big thing that you should do regardless of what business uh, you want to start, right? So uh, educate yourself more specifically in the courier industry. Start off by watching my uh, my courier playlist, please. You'll see that I talk about everything from expecting vans, take you along with routes with me, how to run your numbers so you know if this is a good route or not, right? So start off there. Cause it costs you nothing and you can decide before you start spending money and time in this business. If this is something that you really want to do from somebody that's been in the industry now for over five years. So step one, don't spend any money. Watch those free videos that are in that playlist. And I can link that playlist down below to make it easy to find. Second thing is now I'm going to tell you guys to invest in my courier book, right? You could call it a selfish plug or whatever, but it's called the drive to freedom. The hustler's guide to becoming an independent courier. Now, the reason why I'm telling you to buy the book, even though you're going to learn a lot of information from the free videos, is because what I get all the time is people say that they watched all the videos, they know what to do, but then they forgot something and they'll say, well, what video did you talk about? Uh, examining whether or not this is a good route? What video did you talk about if you could do this if you were failing or not, right? So- I currently have over 600 videos total, so uh, it, it's hard for me to tell you exactly what video it, uh, I said something, but what you can do if you have the book, it's a short read, and you can highlight it. Uh, I'm the king of highlighters, so you can highlight or bookmark it however you want to be with little tabs that you can get from the dollar store, so if you want to mark the section where I explain to you, you know, um, can felons do this? Is there any workaround for felons? How do I examine the route uh, when they tell me a number? How do I run my numbers so I can determine or estimate what my profitability will be on this route? So uh, while you can do it, or a lot of people have said that they've done it with the free YouTube videos, now it takes time. You got to remember what video it is. You got to fast forward to the part. And to me, I even use the book, right? And I know the information, but sometimes with all the other businesses that I have going on, I still say, you know, uh, I'm going to reference my book uh, to see exactly, you know what I mean, for this area, what's the type of gas, all of the things like that. Because uh, there's certain information in there that if you're doing a lot of different businesses, sometimes 
basic stuff that you learn fundamentally might just slip your mind. So I'm telling you as somebody that's been in the industry and yeah, I know this stuff, but sometimes you could just uh, not be thinking about it in the moment if you got a lot of stuff going on. So the drive to freedom is available on Amazon. I'm going to drop the link in the live chat for those of you that are interested and basically use this as a reference guide. So of course, read it all the way through one time. It's going to be short read. People have said they read this book in a day. So it really just depends on how fast you read. Uh, but uh, don't just read the book just to say I went through the book and read it. Uh, parts that you know that are important, uh, highlight it. Use those little cheap uh, tabs, put it in the book so you can reference it. So if you're ever in a situation where a new opportunity uh, presents itself and you're not sure what you should think about or take into account, then the book is a good reference guide for you for that. Uh, so that's going to be uh, something else that I'm going to plug as well. Second thing, though. So now you educated yourself. I group both of those together. You watch the free videos. You still say after watching the free videos, I think this is something I'm going to do. You already made a small investment. You got the book. You already highlighted it. So now if somebody ever puts you in a situation trying to sell you a cargo van, you know how to inspect that cargo van to know if that'll be a good van to make your money uh, off of or not uh, and everything related to that. Now, save your money, right? You've educated yourself. Save your money. The reason why this is a necessary step that I wanted to highlight here is because I find that a lot of people, and I've been guilty of this as well, so I'm not saying it's just you guys or anybody you may know that has this problem. Uh, it happens to me sometimes as well, is that once you learn new information about how to make money, a lot of people want to jump on it and feel like they're going to miss the ship. So before they really properly educate themselves, they jump on it, or as soon as they get a little bit of information, they jump on it. So I'm going to tell you to save your money. I personally recommend that you start off with a cargo van. Can you start off with something smaller than a cargo van? I tell you guys all the time, it really just depends on your area. So the general answer is yes, but they may not have an immediate need in your area for a sedan or SUV or something like that. So you get the most bang for your buck. If you start off with a cargo van or larger, that's personally what I started off with uh, when I started my business. So you're saving your money, right? So now you know about the business. Maybe you branch out. You start reaching out to companies and everything that you learned in the videos and in the book. And you're saving your money up for a cargo van. And you're not trying to jump on the very first opportunity that comes your way because if you might jump on it and it may not be as good as this other opportunity that's coming along. So you're not going to save your money for forever. However, you're going to examine multiple opportunities, right? So you're going to save your money. And instead of just jumping on the first person that lets you do it with your sedan, you're going to say, okay, I know about this company. I've ran my numbers. The profitability is X amount of dollars. Uh, but I'm going to keep on researching other companies, find out what's required to start either with a third party company, uh, get a large direct contract, or to go out and get my own customers. Really just depends on what you want to do, the money you want to invest, the time you want to invest, things like that. But I'm telling you, you're not going to miss the ship, right? The independent courier industry has been around before I was in it, right? So I didn't create the industry. It is a part of the transportation industry, which ultimately, that's how I want you to be thinking about this, right? So you can start off as saying, I'm just an independent courier service, but really, I think that that's a limited way of thinking. Think of yourself as a transportation company that currently specializes in independent courier services, right? I know that's a mouthful, but the mentality that I have is that, right? So you're a transportation company that specializes in, in independent courier services. If you think about it that way, then you could be a trifecta like my business is where we do independent courier work, we do expediting work, we do moving work, right? The transportation business uh, has a side of it that doesn't even involve you being behind the steering wheel. So maybe you want to talk about becoming a dispatcher, a freight broker, whatever it is within the industry, right? So your company can do all of that. So don't think that, hey, I'm going to be an independent courier and this is all that I'm going to do uh, because you can choose to be that, but I'm all about multiple streams of income. So I want you to think of yourself as a transportation company. Transportation company can be a freight brokerage company, a dispatching company. You can have cargo vans, box trucks, semi-trailers, dualies, tow trucks, whatever you want to have, right? So uh, don't start off in this industry 
limiting yourself mentally, even if you have a financial constraint at the moment, right? Uh, you could say, okay, I can afford to start off as an independent courier, but this is not my end goal. Maybe down the road, you're going to be a full service transportation company and have everything from cargo vans to semi trucks and your own freight brokerage and everything. So save your money. Don't feel like you're going to miss out because this information is new to you, but the transportation industry has been around before I was born. It'll be around after many of us are going. People are trying to scare you and say, okay, uh, automation is coming and that's going to eliminate all of the jobs in the transportation industry. I think that it will change the industry. And I think in a lot of different ways, uh, depending on how it ultimately turns out, because there's different discussions on it, it might ultimately uh, better the industry more so than hurt the industry. Because you got to think about it. Uh, I'm not here telling you to go get a job right? As an independent courier driver for a company, I'm telling you to start your own independent courier service or your own transportation business that specializes in, in independent courier service now. And you spent and you expand out to do whatever it is that you decide to do down the road. Right. So that being said, when companies partner with other companies, because you might not understand it yet, but you are your own company when you get into this game. But if you coming from an employee mentality and that's all you know, you might still be thinking that you're an employee, but you're going to learn real quick when you get out here, you're not. So when these companies are contracting you, they're not just trying to get a warm body to move the freight to point A to point B. They're also outsourcing that headache. So even if automated vehicles come into play, if they get all automated vehicles, and eliminate all contractors, owner operators, whatever you want to call it, they're taking back on that headache that they previously had outsourced. So even if that's where the industry is going, you got to understand that the value that you provide is not just that you're a warm body in a seat because anybody, well, most people rather, most people can be a warm body in a seat. What you're selling them on is your efficiency to do it and you're taking away a headache. So you're giving somebody peace of mind. If, if you have tunnel vision again, uh, you're not going to be successful long term in any business. So think wide when you think about your business. I'm not just a warm body that can take a mailbag from a warehouse to a post office. Right. That's one aspect of the bit of the service that I provide you. Uh, and this is just the mentality that I have. And I want you to adopt as well. However, I'm providing you an efficient service to alleviate a headache. Because if I don't do it and you get employees to do it, then now you got to deal with everything that comes with an employee. If I don't do it and you get an automated vehicle to do it, then you still have to worry about there's insurance on that automated vehicle. Somebody has to maintain that automated vehicle. If that automated vehicle malfunctions and there ever is an incident, which, you know, I, I hope it never happens. But when we're talking about vehicles, uh, regardless of how new it is, a vehicle eventually we'll have wear and tear and have breakdowns and issues like that. So who's going to deal with all of that headache, right? So is the company going to say that we're going to take on all of this headache just so we can alleviate some warm bodies? Small companies may, but then down the road, you'll see that they turn around and go right back into hiring contractors. You might be, and I don't know exactly what the future may hold. Of course, we all hear the discussions. Uh, so let's say one day it is all automated trucks because it's safer, more efficient or whatever. You'll just be an independent courier service that owns these automated vehicles. Right. In the beginning, just like computers, they'll be super expensive. But as they become the norm, we all know prices will come down. They'll become more affordable and things like that. So just think about that. But I'm sure you guys get the point. We talked about saving your money. Next thing, keep in mind, everything on this list, this is the order that I recommend that you do them in. So if you do them out of order and you have a hard time doing it, then, you know, it's 100 percent on you. So educate yourself. Watch the JTL's Courier playlist so you understand what you're about to get your time and money involved in. If after you watch the free videos and haven't spent a dime, you still want to get into this business, invest in the drive to freedom. The link to it is in the live chat already. Uh, and this is going to be your reference guide. So if you're ever on the spot meeting with a company or on your way to meet with a company and you want to know, OK, they're saying that they're going to give me this area and the route pays fourteen hundred dollars a week. Am I going to get that whole fourteen hundred dollars a week? Well, in this book, it tells me, OK, these are some things I need to factor in insurance, fuel, you know, routine maintenance, things like that. So let me go through. So now when I go in this meeting, I can sit down and I'm asking the right questions. So that I can really find out, okay, are there any fees? What do those fees go to, right? And now they say $1,400 a week, 
But when you get down to the nitty gritty, as we call it, you say, okay, uh, I'm really only making 650, 700, 800, whatever the math is, once you deduct all of your expenses, right? So now that is your realistic number per week. And you got to ask yourself, am I happy with 800 a week, right? They said 1400, but after fuel and everything, it's 800. Okay, what bills do I have at the house and what other financial uh, obligations do I have? Is working for myself making $800 a week going to accomplish that? If the answer is no, okay, thank you for your time. This route is not for me. I'm going to find something else. Maybe it's a route that pays the same amount, but there's less fees or maybe there's a better paying route, right? So then after that, you're saving your money. You're not jumping on the first thing that comes your way. You're going to look for the best opportunity for your business, right? You're not looking for the first opportunity. You're looking for the best opportunity for your business. Next up, you're going to get a route, right? I know some people are going to say this is backwards, but those people that have seen the videos and have the book know the why I say get a route because I haven't told you to get a van, a truck, or anything yet, right? If you do it the way that I explain, you find a route, you negotiate the terms. They're probably going to list how much it pays, but you're still going to have a conversation with them because what a lot of companies do to save time because they're very busy, they might say uh, JT Hustle's courier company has routes for uh, minivans, cargo vans, box trucks, sprinters, paying between $800 to $2,000 a week, right? But if you just say, okay, I want $2,000 a week, but you don't go through the whole get a route process where you contact them, see what's currently available, because by the time they made that listing to the time that you call them, maybe the $2,000 a week route has been filled, but, excuse me, but they haven't updated the posting yet. But if you reach out to the company, they'll tell you that. Or maybe the $2,000 a week route is for the sprinters and the box trucks. You can't afford that. The listing said they have contracts for everything. You say, OK, I got a minivan or a sedan. I want to make two thousand dollars a week. Not understanding that they're saying that, you know, for the two thousand a week, they want you to have the bigger equipment. You can't afford it. So now, realistically, you got to run your numbers based off of whatever you can do with a minivan, sedan or whatever that they're soliciting work for from your company. So you find that out. You I, I show you guys how to find different ways. Uh, that they post these routes. I recommend you start off with third-party warranty companies. Uh, if you're new, third-party warranty companies uh, called 3PLs, commonly third-party logistics companies, whatever you want to call them. I tell you to start off with them so you can learn the industry. Uh, whether you're a brand new entrepreneur, of course, it's a no-brainer. You should start off there. But even if you do have entrepreneurial experience doing something else, I tell you to start off here if this is new to you, because that way you don't have to go all in, if you know what I mean. What I mean by all in is that if you go direct with the post office, you might get paid net 30, net 45, something like that. And you might have to have the operating capital to work two months out of your own pocket. You might have to have enough infrastructure. By infrastructure, I mean warehouses, uh, personnel, vehicles, security, uh, to be able to operate that entire time before the checks start running in. So I personally recommend that you start off with third party companies. You get your feet wet. You say, OK, I like this. Now, do I want to invest more money to get the big contracts? Because it might take you know, I'm going to just make up numbers here. So don't say this is exactly what it's going to take. It, it might take you fifteen thousand dollars in two and a half months of time if you say you want a direct contract. Now, that direct contract might pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, but your first check is going to be two and a half months late. And in that time, it's going to take you five, five figures just to float before the checks start coming in. So that's the kind of stuff that people aren't really telling you enough about. So I want to make sure I emphasize that here in my area, right? So you get around, you search for them online, you talk to the people, you know, based off of either the equipment you have or the equipment that you're willing to get that if I do go out and I buy that cargo van or if I buy that Sprinter or if, even if you don't got a car, if I go buy that car, uh, the profit on that car every week will be X amount of dollars uh, for my business. My personal expenses are this. Am I happy with that situation? Yes or no. There is no right or wrong answer. It really just depends on what makes you happy and what's your financial situation. And then and only then, I highly recommend you get the proper equipment. You do it this way. You get a route and you're not, when I say get a route, they're not going to sign you on 
for the contract, there's going to get a point in the conversation where you can tell that, OK, they got a feel for me. I got a feel for them. The profit is good. They're ready for me to come in, show them my vehicle and sign. And that's what I mean by get a route. And then you go out, you have the means to or you already have it, depending on what you're starting off with. Go get that equipment. Go start your route. If you do these in the reverse order, like a lot of people do, and then they come to me and say, JT, I did it in the reverse order. Can you fix it? I'm like, I really don't know because I told you what order to do it in, but you did it in your order. So now you got to just figure it out. They'll get the equipment. Then they can't find any work for it. And now they're frustrated because they got to pay insurance on that vehicle uh, or maybe uh, the insurance is not that bad on it. But they kicked out a few thousand dollars for it. And now they want to start making some of that money back or even worse. I never recommend that you start off with a vehicle that you're making payments on and got to finance. But now every month you got to make that vehicle payment and that insurance payment and it's not making any money for you. So now you're taking money away from your job or other business or wherever it's coming from to fund this asset that's not producing anything for you. So, again, I recommend you do this in this order. You get a route, then you get an equipment. Don't try to flip it and do it the other way, because then I, a lot of people reach out to me. I'm sure I got some DMs about it now. I haven't checked them yet, but it's almost a daily basis. Somebody said I went out, I bought a truck, I bought a Sprinter, I bought a cargo van. Now what I'm going to do. Right. And now, uh, especially those people that are under the gun and saying, you know, this is my last option and uh, I desperately need to find a route. So. Do it this way. Moving on. You get, you get the proper equipment. Always let the company that you're going to contract with decide what you need. Don't ask me, right? Or don't ask anybody, right? Uh, because I can tell you cargo vans, you're going to get a job pretty much anywhere across the board, right? That's why I recommend you start with cargo vans. However, if you don't already own a cargo van, still let them be the ones that, that tell you that. Because if you're financially in a situation where you say, I can afford a cargo van, a Sprinter, or a box truck, uh, it doesn't really matter. And they say, OK, we'll give you double the money if you don't mind getting a Sprinter. Then OK. Right. So it, I, it's less expensive to maintain a cargo van than a Sprinter or a box truck. But I don't know your financial situation. So if you're in a good financial situation, then you might want to start off with something bigger and make more money. Or if you're partnering with multiple people, then it might make more sense that way. So always, always let whoever is going to pay you tell you what they're going to pay you for, right? I'm not the one that's giving you the route and telling you how much I'm going to pay you. That company is. So let them be the one that tell you, if you get this, we'll pay you this. So that way, you know, going into it, what you're going to make. But I personally love cargo vans, made a lot of money with them. But if you ha you don't own one already, let them tell you. And if they give you an, a list of options and they pretty much say whatever, uh, we'll put you to work with whatever, then cargo van going to get you the most bang for your buck. You're not going to make as much as the Sprinter or the box truck early on, but you can always upgrade to that later and uh, let the business pay for that. And it's cheaper to maintain a cargo van than it is to maintain anything with a diesel engine. Um, next up, start the route, learn the business, right? No brainer. So now you educated yourself, you saved up your money, you found a route that made sense uh, based off of the time that you want to do it in and the amount of money you want to make. And keep in mind, this may not happen instantly. It might take you months to find a route that you like, right? Now, if you hustling and you really need to go get something, of course, you're going to take what you can get, but still continue to look. And then it might take you months to find the route that you really want. So early on, if you don't have any income stream at all, then you might say, OK, I got to take this route. It's going to help me pay the bills. I'm going to be all right. Uh, but keep looking and find the route that makes the most sense for you. Right. But understand that this might not happen in one day. I think a lot of people uh, expect to be able to watch all the videos, buy the book, save up their money, get a route, uh, get the equipment and get paid all in a week's time. And it doesn't happen that way uh, in most cases. Right. So you start the route, you learn the business. And my recommendation is one year. I know different people learn at a different pace. So one year to me, is a conservative worst case scenario, how long it takes the average person to pretty much be competent enough to expand this business. In one year's time, you're gonna deal with insurance, you're gonna deal with breakdowns, 
You're going to deal with different companies. Uh, hopefully, if you follow my advice and learn, you know, what what's involved with these companies, maybe you start testing the waters with direct contracts and bigger contracts. But you're just going to get a year of experience on OJT, if you will. And you're making money working for yourself. And now a lot of independent couriers, they decide that. They don't want the extra headache of employees and other equipment or other contractors with their own equipment or whatever comes with getting larger contracts. And they say, I'm happy making X amount of dollars a year. And they decide to be one man, one woman operations for forever. I'm here to tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And by giving yourself time to deal with everything in taxes as well, don't want to live that off. One year's time, you'll understand how to file taxes as a business, which may be new to you uh, if you've never done it before. But going back to what I'm saying, one year's time, you know the business. Now you can say, okay, a year ago, I was gun ho. I wanted to come jump in and get big mail contracts and the biggest contracts in the world. But now that I actually see what it takes, how much money, how much time, how much headache is involved, I'm happy with making my little money right here as a one man, one woman operation, maybe a two person operation, whatever you decide makes sense for you. So, you can do it in less than a year. I did it in less than a year. I know other people that have done it in less than a year, but I'm not telling you that you have to do it in less than a year. I think that in one year's time, you will have enough experiences go on in your business that at that time you can make a competent decision on if you want to stay a one person operation or expand. Moving on, this is assuming that you like it after that one year to the point where you want to expand. I tell you to expand at your own rate. What I mean by at your own rate is whatever your business profits can afford you, uh, can uh, allow you to do or you can afford to do because of the business, that's how you expand. So let's say that you got a courier business and an e-commerce business and a part-time job, right? You just doing everything. Or you just got a job and doing the courier business around that because you found out a way to make it work in your area, which is not always common, but I know some people uh, up north that were able to do it. So anyway, if your business, your courier business does not pay enough money to allow it to, to grow and sustain itself, I recommend that you just work on making that business better so that you're not pulling money from another business or another income stream, your job, real estate investments, whatever you have, and dumping it into it. Now, the first year you may have to do that, but after that first year, that business should start to be self-sustaining. Right. So or, you know, a uh, worst case scenario where a lot of people will say, and it's just worst case scenario for me. If you are going to pull money from your real estate or from your job, make your business like hold your business accountable, just the courier service to pay back that money with interest. Right. Pay back that money with interest. And if you can get that money from another income stream of your from yourself then why not give it the same respect as if you got that money from the bank, right? I don't recommend you going to the bank to expand the business if the business profits aren't already there enough to show you that, hey, this business is growing. It can pay for itself plus some, give you some profits, right? So, but if it's some people that do it and that's why I'm, I'm talking about it now. So if you could pull money from other resources, whether it's your job, your real estate, whatever you have, pay that money back to yourself with interest because the bank, if the bank gave you that money, they'll make you pay that money back with interest. But ideally, you should have it so that that business funds itself, right? Because that business could be failing, but you're making so much money somewhere else, you keep dumping money into a failing business. And if you mix all your money together, which is not something that I recommend, but at the end of the day, people don't listen to, to, you know, what I have to say. And again, you're not obligated to it's your own business. But if you're pooling all that money together, I recommend you have separate bank accounts, separate LLCs, separate EIN numbers. But some people put all of that money in one account. So you're not even noticing that your courier business not putting that much money in it. It's coming from over here. So you might not even recognize that your business is not doing well. But if you separate everything and you only expand based off of uh, how well your courier business is doing, it's going, to fo it's going to force you to become a better business owner because you're going to figure out, okay, why are we not profitable enough for me to buy another van or to buy another truck, right? Um, is it because we do have profits coming in, but we got to just play the patience game, 
right? So maybe we play the patience game. If it is a huge, unbelievable, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, which most people don't have, but this is a question that I get a lot, and you got to get a loan from the bank, then, okay, you do what you do. I personally don't want to tell you to start getting into debt, though. So that's why I'm really big on, especially if your business is not super profitable, don't take on any unnecessary debt. Just force that business to be great and fund itself. So let the business fund its own growth, whether it be, okay, now I can afford another van. Now I have enough money to pay for me to get my freight brokerage license or training or go whatever direction you take your transportation company in. Because again, you're not limited to just being an independent courier company. You're a transportation company who right now specializes in independent courier services, but that's not all you can be. You can do whatever it is you want to do. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't branch out or do anything like that. So, and the last thing that I have here is automate and diversify. Uh, by automation, I mean, well, it for me, it's people automation, right? It's not a lot of software. I don't have any self-driving vehicles in my fleet. So it's uh, getting a good fleet manager, getting good workers, not trying to pay them the bare minimum, pay them a fair compensation for a fair day's work. I really believe in that. Uh, I've tried it both ways. I know some people out there will say I can get away with getting my, my friend or my cousin or somebody that's on hard times, minimum wage, but then you you get what you give, right? So if you, uh, you might get a low quality person that's going to give you more headache than they're worth if you're trying to, to squeeze every dollar uh, out of them as possible and work them to death. So automation is usually through personnel uh, when you, you got to put people in place to run it. And you can uh, register with different companies out there if you want to automate the payroll and stuff like that. That's no problem. But Automate and diversify. If you want to diversify in-house, of course, your courier company can also do expediting. Uh, it can also be a moving company if you're going to invest in that. Uh, it can also be freight brokerage, right? It can also save up, get a warehouse, do warehousing services, right? You can. There's a whole host of things that fall into the logistics industry, the transportation industry that you can so choose to do. If you want to diversify outside of the industry, which is personally what I've done, and I'm not saying one way is better over the other, it really just depends on what you want to do. Uh, you can allow that to I personally, let me just tell you what I did. I allowed that to fund my e-commerce business, fund this YouTube channel, and then I'm letting all of those things combine to fund the real estate that I want to get into now uh, and things like that. But you don't have to take my path. You can do whatever makes sense for you based off of your interests and what you're trying to accomplish in life. So uh, if you want to get into real estate, e-commerce, writing a book, whatever, right? Uh, your only limitation is your imagination when it comes to this business. But I do recommend that at some point you don't work yourself to death. So you expand the business, you got competent people. And then after that's running smooth, you say, okay, I got a couple people working along with me or for me, however you think about it. And now you're ready to automate it, put some competent people in place. When automated, I'm not saying set it and forget it either. Now, you still check on it because, uh, what gets measured gets done is a popular quote that you probably heard before. So I recommend that you stay on top of it and you don't just say, OK, do this and I'll check on you in a month or two months or I'll check on you whenever. Right. So uh, trying to see who's just pulling up, but I think they're for the business next door. But um, anyway, long story short. I recommend you do get to the point where you start diversifying, letting your courier service pay for its own expansion other directions you want to go in your transportation industry. If you say, I'm just happy being a, a one person independent courier operation, but you're making good profits with it, then let that fund whatever other business you want to do. Or even if you're somebody that says, I don't want to have a lot of businesses, JT, uh, maybe you just want to invest in stocks or whatever it is that you like to do. But there you have it. Seven steps in order that I recommend that you do them in order to have a successful independent courier service. Educate yourself save your money, get a route, get proper equipment, start the route and learn the business, expand at your own rate, meaning let the business fund the expansion. Uh, so that way you're not dumping money into a failing business. Last but not least, automate and diversify your business. I'm all about multiple streams of income. Uh, so if one wheel dries up, then you can always go to the next one and on and on and build your empire, right? So right now I'm going to add a couple of links. Uh, I'm putting my book link in there uh, for you guys again, for the people that just tuned in. And 
Also, for those of you that don't know, I am doing phone consultations again. So if you want to do a phone consultation, let me put that here. And if you're watching this video after the fact, it'll be the exact same stuff uh, down in the description of this video as well. And I can't spell today. Okay. So if you want to do a phone consultation, that's the link for that service as well. Um, do you have to do it? Uh, people say, do I have to do it? You don't have to do anything. But it's just a service for those people that are interested in it, right? So that's what it is. I'm going to run through these comments, and I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, shout out to MBNCT, Side Hustle Sanctuary. Uh, shout out to TV Jump Shot, Angel Girl, Pin Mo. Uh, shout out to all 59 people that's watching this. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Any general questions you got about the independent career industry? Uh, I know for those people that have been tuning in for a while, you probably already know this stuff. But for the benefit of anybody that may be new or if there's still any unanswered questions, we'll run through them. And then I'm going to get out of here. Let me see. Um, what's good, fam? What's up, BK from the Rockies? Great information. Appreciate that. Definitely ordering the book. Appreciate that. Shout out to California. See California. Um, airboard marking tough out here. Right. I'm not sure what airboard marking is. Um, unless that's the name of a, a, a company. Right. Um, agreed. Having the right equipment or vehicle helps to open up other financial options. Absolutely. Uh, I just went to my local post office. Supervisors not familiar with independent contractors picking up packages in the Baltimore, Maryland, Central Avenue, right? Because because that's not their job, right? Their job is to run their individual terminal. You, uh, if you go in there, then if you want to start and work with one individual post office, you're going to be a rule courier, which is basically the same thing as a postman or a postwoman, but you use your own vehicle and you get a little bit more than somebody that wears the outfit and drive one of the, the work trucks, right? So it's not their job to know about the entire network. Um, usually the postmaster will know about it, right? Uh, or you go to the USPS.gov uh, website to read up about it. But an individual post office, they have so much stuff going on, especially if you're in a major city, uh, they don't know about it and they have no interest in finding out for you because they just too busy. So individual post offices, yeah, they manager is just focused on running their post office as good as possible. So if you just want one post office, that's more of a rural career, a rural career. Uh, when looking at equipment, how best to make that decision, tight mileage, engine size. I always say let the business decide, right? Let the business decide. I love the, the Savannah GMC cargo vans, right? But that's personal preference. It's not saying that it's any better than if you go out and get a Mercedes Sprinter or it's any better than the E250 or the E350 or the Dodge Ram 1500, which was my very first cargo van. Right. So I always say, let the person that's paying you decide uh, what what they'll give you the most money for or give you the money that you need to make for. Right. Well, personally, I like cargo vans. Um, I had E-150s and 1500s. Uh, they don't work as well, in my opinion. So if you're going to get a 250 or a 2500, 3500 is great. But of course, they cost a little bit more. So if you can get a 250 or a 2500 uh, model. Uh, it, it's something that I think lasts a little bit longer for me. But ultimately, I always say, let who's going to cut the check tell you uh, exactly, you know what I mean, uh, what they will pay you for, right? Uh, right, keep posting questions. All right, yeah, definitely, definitely. Any questions you guys have, I'm run through it right now. Um, JT, I have some stuff you need. JT, I have some stuff you need to also think about with what you're teaching will go along with everything you're doing. Please get up with me. What is it, K9 Eagle? Put it in the chat, whatever it is. Um, great information. So uh, that way we all can decide. Shout out to all 64 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, what is a good price for a cargo van and what is the lowest you would go or what do you recommend? Uh, I recommend that you don't spend over $5,000, uh, but then I also preference that and let you know that I've only operated this business up and down the East Coast. So we've been up, killed it in Delaware, uh, up near Jersey area, way up north, all the way down to as far as Florida, right? So, um, but I, I was primarily headquartered around the Maryland area and now around the Carolinas, right? So uh, if you live out West or if you live on the West Coast, then, uh, excuse me, I'm not sure what cargo vans cost in your area. So uh, maybe $5,000 won't get you a decent cargo van. Maybe you got to go up a little bit more. But in my experience, 
again, just in the regions that I ran, under $5,000. I've got good vans for $2,200. Right, thirty five hundred dollars, but I would say five thousand or less should get you a good running van. Uh, but you guys can let me know. I'm sure I got some people from out west and other places. Uh, it, what what do cargo vans go for? I recommend you get a used one. Don't go get a new one and and pay a note every single uh month if you're new in the business because now you signed up for that multi year commitment lots of times. And you don't even know if you don't like the business long enough to be in it that long. Uh, while you can do multiple things with a cargo van, uh, if you get out of the cargo van uh, or the independent courier industry and want to do something else with that van, it may be a learning curve, meaning that there's an amount of time where you're in the business, but you're not efficiently running the business because there's a lot of things you just don't know yet. And in that time, your income may drop. But if your income drops, but that payment don't drop, it can put you in a financial hardship at that time. So I personally recommend $5,000 or less uh, if, if you can. Uh, I would say under 160,000 miles because it's not uncommon for you to put 30, 40, 50,000 or more miles on a cargo van the first year. And uh, once you get over 200,000 miles, um, it really comes down to how it's maintained, right? I know some people that say they got 300, 400. Uh, the most I've ever seen is 600,000 miles on a van. But that gentleman had the van since it was under 200,000 miles. So he knows how it was maintained. And he knows that even though the mileage is high, it, it pretty much was a new van with all the, the maintenance that he did on it. So I would say if you get something that's been well maintained with under 150, 160,000 miles, then you can go a year or two with minimal maintenance. You still gonna have to do oil changes, maybe a set of brakes, set of tires, Routine stuff like that is unavoidable. And what it don't matter if you get a new van or not, you still gonna have to do oil changes and, and, and routine maintenance on it. Uh, so I would say something like that, uh, expecting that, that it's gonna cross over two hundred thousand miles. And uh, if you can squeeze two two good years of hustling out of one van, uh, then I think that's good because you made so much money, you can either go buy another van just like it and squeeze out two more. Or maybe now you're in position to say, I can go get a nicer, uh, newer van and, and let this old van pay for the new, right? I'm all about letting the business pay for itself or fund its, its own expansion. I don't have Facebook, right? Um, let me see, right? If, if, you, if you're a business owner and you don't have all the major social media platforms, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Your customers are there, so you should be there. You don't have to have a personal account where you share how your kids and family is doing, but you should at a bare minimum have a business presence on all social media. Uh, and that goes for everybody, right? If your customers are there and you're trying to reach them, you should be there. Uh, talking about a B2B business, which is the independent courier service, most of your customers are other businesses. So also consider having a LinkedIn account uh, for your business as well, because it's not too many individuals out there uh, that are looking for uh, independent courier service to provide them services on a regular basis, right? Uh, but once you go into diversifying and doing other things, then you might find other opportunities for you in that. Um, let me see. All right, we touched on that, touched on that. Shout out to Alabama, shout out to Jersey, shout out to Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, right, buying that laundromat would be great YouTube content. Yep, dope. Um, still, still talking about that. It might work out, might not. We'll just see what happens with the, whoever owns it, right? Uh, we'll see if they're willing to negotiate on it, and we'll go from there. Um, what does on-demand courier mean? Does that mean they'll call you only when they need you? Yes. Yes. So I recommend that you get um, at least one route because with route work, you kind of have like steady income coming in, and you can budget off of that. You know, every week you'll have this much money. So uh, when you're going to get an apartment or a mortgage, you know how much money you have coming in. Uh, lots of times what attracts people for on-demand work, let's say I have you go – from one side of town to the other side of town on, on demand work, I might give you $60 for that trip. On a regular route, I might only give you $35, $40 for that same trip. But on the route, I'm going to give you $35, $40 every single day. At $60, I might give you that every other week, right? So on demand couriers, yeah. Uh, they also call it hot shotting as well. They just, as they need you, they, they use you, right? Checking in, being interested in courier work for a year now. Good info, looking to apply to apply it soon. Definitely, definitely. Let me jump around, see some networking, bought the independent courier book, loaned it out, never got it back, got to buy another, maybe two more. So yeah, man, each one teach one, man. Appreciate that. Uh, shout out from Texas. Also, I'm going to uh, 
put this here so you guys can see what the if you go to Amazon, search for JT Hustles, you'll see it. It's also linked. Uh, so you can just click the link in the chat. But that's what the book cover looks like. Just me and my daughter. So that's the right book. I don't know if you're interested. Shout out from Texas, home of the Astros. Um, <laughs> all right, thanks for giving out so much knowledge. Cool. Uh, let me see where we at with it. I appreciate you dropping that link in there, BK from the Rockies to the Teachable course uh, for the other businesses. That if you guys want to learn about that, right? Uh, what about the auto auction? Um, I don't know if that's a question to me or to somebody else, but um, if you're talking about buying stuff for the auto auction, I would say it's not bad. Um, if you are somebody that knows about vehicles, if not, take somebody with you that knows about vehicles uh, and make sure that uh, you are getting a good ride, not just a, a vehicle that rides good that day, but actually a good ride. So somebody that can do a thorough inspection uh, of the vehicle. If you yourself uh, don't know how to properly inspect the vehicle, make sure everything is in decent running order before you buy it. Um, thank you for sharing. No problem. See un a few under 140,000 still new to the cargo vans. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it it's people out here running with 200, 300,000 miles. I just recommend that if you could find one with under 140, under 150,000 miles on it, and it's been well maintained, uh, a year or two is conservative. You can ride that thing for many moons and it can pay for itself. 10 times over, and that one vehicle can fund trucks and other vehicles and things like that. That's personally what I did with a 98 Dodge Ram 1500 cargo van. We rolled that to, to the wheels for, fell off for that one. But it funded me getting like four other vans. Well, you know, it funded one van and then those two funded the other ones. But basically, it funded four other cargo vans, box trucks, right, on and on. Uh, and then that industry or my business funded what I'm doing now, right? So definitely uh it, it was a blessing to me let me see exactly 5k is my max i want to spend on the cargo van yep yep i would say uh, and you can find something less than that uh craigslist an uh, auction like the person mentioned if you know about cars any you any used car salesman uh that you trust in your area facebook marketplace right the list can go on and on on different places to check out uh, looked out and got one from a carpet company for eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that's dope. If it's businesses in your area like that, yep. I know U-Haul. At a certain time, U-Haul gets rid of their old trucks. Uh, sometimes they have pickup trucks and cargo vans there. If you're a local U-Haul or wherever rental place has vans, you could talk to them about when do they sell their old vans and where do they post it online or how do they put the word out for you to go get it on that. Um, all right. How do you get started delivering packages for the post office, right? Uh, there, there's two ways to do it. The, the most practical way is you start off with a third-party logistics company. Uh, you learn the business. You save up your money. You learn about the how the post office uh, is, is managing that third-party company that's giving you uh, an opportunity to run for them. And then you transition over. So you're going to learn pretty much in your area how they manage that 3PL that, that you're working for. That's the most practical way. The other way is you can try to go direct through the SAM website, which it was uh, fedbizops.gov, but they put the word out that they're consolidating all of that to SAM.gov. You can try to go to SAM.gov and apply. Uh, it's super competitive. It's a good chance that if you're inexperienced, uh, you're not going to be able to put in a proper bid or you're not going to have the proper equipment or the finances to do it. Right. But I'm going to tell you that answer, too, because uh, I'm sure it's at least one person that will see this video that, that wants to know that answer as well. But um, that's not the most practical way to get into it um, for most people. Let me see what we left off. Um, cool. Look like some networking going on. Some companies out by me want the van to be 05 or newer. So I should have a van next month. Absolutely. And those that's things like that, Jason Phillips, that you'll find out. Um, if you get a route before you get the proper equipment, because you might say, I got a good deal on a 90 something van, but then you find out all the companies in your area wanted to be a 05 or newer. So now you either got to go try to sell them a 98 is just as good as a 05 or newer. And it may or may not work. It really just depends on the company and who you're talking to and how good you are in negotiating. Right. Or uh, you could just do it this way. Find out you need a 05. Find the best deal for something that's 05 or newer, and that's one less hurdle you got to cross. Um, let me see. Yep, yep, networking going on, jumping around. Thanks for your time and advice. What would you recommend? Uh, 
be your first goal as far as work and our contracts when you're ready to drive and got your cargo van. Uh, I'm in Alabama. Third party warrant, third party logistics companies, right? I almost said warranty companies. I'm thinking about Mike, but they're logistics companies. Three PLs, third party logistics companies. They they solicit work for independent couriers all the time. I got a whole videos on this channel with over a hundred thousand views telling you how you could go check Craigslist, which is just one of many resources to go see uh, if in your area um, they need work. Um, let me see. Thanks for answering my question. No problem. Uh, doubtless link, please, brother JT. All right, give me one second. We'll drop that for you guys as well. And I appreciate everybody that's tuning in uh, to these live streams. I know uh, some people will say me they they like more of these courier videos, so I'm going to periodically, you know, just touch on it uh, and answer any unanswered questions you have, or just remind some people, right? Uh, so see all 62 people that's here. Comment where you're watching this from. Any questions, if you're just now tuning in and know what we're talking about. I just gave you the seven basic steps in order. This is the order that you should do it in, in my humble opinion, if you want to be successful in it, right? So the order that you should do it in to have the least friction in your independent courier service and have the maximum amount of success. So if you have any uh, general questions about it, now is the time to put it. If you catch this video after the fact, Put it down uh, below and I'll get you an answer as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as possible, excuse me. Um, let me see. All right. Um, right. What about discharging debt? Right. What I right, tie, tie that in to the independent courier industry for me and we'll and I'll give you an answer on that. Um, see a question about discharging debt. Um, blessings, brother from California. Shout out to California. Uh, shout out to Atlanta. I'm doing my route right now as I'm listening to you on YouTube. Shout out to you, Charles Bass. Uh, uh, law, law now or laws. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good to know your laws. If you're getting over 10,000 pounds, that might be what they're referring to. Then DOT is involved, right, with cargo vans usually flying under the radar. But, yeah, if you do want to branch out and get larger trucks over 10,000 pounds, uh, dealing with hazmat, going multiple states, Right, definitely a simple, simple search on the DOT website will tell you whether or not um they require you to do anything to be in good standings with them. Um, so absolutely easy to find that out. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you're a cargo van, you're fine. What's up, JT? What's up, William Woodle? Shout out to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Right. So uh link for the shoes will be down in the description below as well. Appreciate you guys' time and until next time. So all my hustlers stay hustling. JT hustles. I'm gone.